I believe I filmed this video sometime in January of 2019, just before the COVID pandemic started, and I don't normally show any footage of myself in my demos, but in this particular instance, I did film myself a little bit, and uh, I just wanted to show uh, a little bit of how I operate, how I work when I go out and plein air paint. Now, in a place like the Capitol or the Governor's Mansion or anywhere that's really nice, uh, I go and I dress just like everyone else. Uh, I usually dress fairly nice anyway, but when I go to a place like the Capitol, the Mansion or whatever, then I wear a suit and tie. And one of the things that I wanted to point out when you go plein air painting is you really want to fit in. Uh, one way to make yourself comfortable and everyone comfortable around you while you're working is just to be a part of the scenery. When, um, when I go to the Dixie National Rodeo, then you know, I dress with my cowboy boots and cowboy hat uh, I grew up raising cattle, so I'm very comfortable with all of that. Uh, but when I'm at a place like the, uh, when I, whenever I'm at some place that's really nice, then I try to dress up and look nice too. And if you want to do urban sketching or plein air painting inside uh, government buildings or office buildings or whatever, just looking nice can go a long way into getting you where you want to go. I will be the first to tell you that I've been asked to leave places before. Uh, and it was nothing personal. It was just, for whatever reason, the security for that particular building or uh, piece of land, they didn't want, they don't want anybody around. And when you're out plein air painting, that's just part of the process. That's just something you have to be willing to accept and just be very gracious. I remember back, oh my goodness, this was probably 25 years ago, I was at, I believe it was Regent College. I was doing a portrait there. And uh, before I met the president of the college to do his portrait, I stayed on the campus and they told me, well, you can go anywhere you want to, just don't get close to the um, a particular house. And I'm trying to remember the uh, name of the person that, that was uh, living there at the time. I had to stop the video and look it up. The name had all, all of a sudden slipped me. It was Pat Robertson. Pat Robertson's uh, house where he was living on the campus. And they just told me, you know, he gets a lot of death threats. He gets a lot of uh, just negative uh, publicity. And, you know, just don't go near the house because there's security that's always watching. And I was probably, oh my goodness, 150, 200, maybe more yards away in an open field. And I was just sketching. And then all of a sudden, out of the woods came this black SUV. It was just like in a movie, this big black SUV. And these two guys got out. I mean, they were in suits, but they had on the dark glasses and everything. And you could tell they were packing. You know, they had they had guns. And they came up, and they were nice, but they were very uh, business-like and asked me, who are you and what are you doing? And I told them, and they said, okay. And they got on their radios and uh, uh, called and made sure that I was who I said I was. And sure enough, they said, yeah, he's okay. He's he's uh, working for the college. But uh, when the guy clicked off his radio, he said, okay, that's fine. You check out, but um, it would really be better if you weren't here. We, If you don't mind, uh, why don't you you know, maybe go another hundred yards in the other direction. Uh, just, it's just better if you're not right here. And uh, like I said, they were real nice, but they had a job to do and it wasn't personal. They just needed me 
not to be interfering with what they were trying to do, which was to protect someone who very often gets uh, lots of very negative, negative attention. Also, whenever I'm plein air painting, unlike a lot of plein air painters, I'm not trying to hide in a cubby hole somewhere. And that's actually what's really funny is the more you try to hide, the more conspicuous you are. And if you're really, if you're, if you're nervous about going out and working with the public, one of the best things to do is start out wherever you feel comfortable, wherever you feel safe, and slowly uh, build your confidence by uh, getting out and realizing that once you get to working, uh, well, half the time people are going to ignore you. They're actually going to walk around you because they don't care. They're out there doing their own thing. They're not particularly interested in you uh, unless you're in their way. So they will literally just walk around you. I've been in places where I would be painting and hundreds of people would walk all around me and I swear out of 250 people, maybe six actually realized that I was painting the rest. They were just busy. They were on their phones. They were uh, headed toward shopping or going home or going to work, doing whatever it is that they do in their life. So if, if that makes you feel better, just again realize that most people, they don't care. Uh, I'm just the opposite. For me, plein air painting is an, an opportunity to meet people and possibly get commissioned work. And I've gotten you know, quite a few commissioned paintings because I was in a particular particular place painting. So what I try to do is if I go to a place and there's 150 people standing on one side and there's 10 people standing on the other side, I go stand with 150 people and I open up my easel and I just plop it down and I start painting. Again, I make sure that I'm not in anybody's way, but I'm certainly not trying to hide. So uh, that's my particular method. Now, I will, I will admit to you, when I first started, I was not that way. The first time I really started plein air painting and urban sketching, I was so intimidated and so nervous, I literally started in my backyard. I didn't even want to paint in my front yard for fear that someone would see me driving by. So I went into my backyard and I did a couple of little paintings, just some little bitty things of the, the vines and leaves and plants just growing in the backyard. And uh, once I did a couple of paintings, I realized that, okay, well, I can, I can do this. And I graduated to my front yard and then across the street and slowly but surely I built up my confidence. And now, well, up until COVID, I just would go anywhere, anytime, any place, uh, and, and just have a delightful time. And the more paintings you get under your belt, the better you're going to feel about it too, because part of the problem with painting is that just like what you're seeing right now, it looks like a mess. When you first start a painting, you're blocking it in and it's just an amorphous mess. There's nothing that's been resolved and you feel, you, know, you, you almost want to apologize when people come by and go, it, it, it will get better. Uh, of course, you need to realize that no matter how bad it is, it's probably infinitely better than any of them could imagine ever doing. So most people are, are just amazed that you can do this to any level of proficiency anyway. So, uh, yeah, like I say, just paint and get a bunch of them under your belt and realize that, yeah, you can do this. Another technique that I do, 
And my mentor, when I was learning to be a portrait painter, the style of the technique that he liked to use was he chose the face since that was the focal point. He would work from that out. And so he would actually get the head pretty much finished. And that way he could judge what level of finish all the rest of the painting needed to go to. He didn't like working over the whole painting and bringing it all up at one time. There's a, a, a really good, wise reason for doing that. And that's because, <clears throat> excuse me, that's because if you're working on a painting and it just starts heading south, I mean, it just starts really giving you problems. It's really nice if you can look on your painting and go, okay, all of the rest of this is a total mess, but this one finished area looks really good. So in terms of, say, a portrait, if you're doing a portrait and you get the likeness and you got the face and it looks really great, well, if you start working on the someone's coat, someone's hand or whatever, and it really starts giving you trouble and you're just fighting and struggling with it and you can't figure out what to do, you can always confidently look back at wherever you are with the, the finished part, say the face on a portrait, and know, okay, I did that, it looks good, I'm not a failure, I'm not a bad person, I can do this. I did it with the face, I can do it with the hand. It's uh, painting is really nothing more than a series of problems that need to be resolved or a series of challenges that need to be worked out. Uh, that's another really good way of looking at painting is looking at it as a series of challenges or problems like a uh, set of mathematical problems that just simply need to be worked out. And if it's not going well, it's because you haven't found the right solution. And I don't know about you, but I'm one of those people that when p paintings are going well, I feel good about myself and the whole world. But when paintings are going bad, I feel bad about everything. And so uh, I take it very personally. And so I'm very careful when I'm painting to, especially when I'm out with, in, with the public and uh, trying to get things, trying to make a good painting, I try to go on as quickly as I can and get an area finished where I feel comfortable, where I don't feel like I need to apologize or whatever uh, for how something looks. And then I can just enjoy the process. Um, also, when you're out plein air painting, uh, try to remember to smile, be open, be friendly. I can't tell you how many artists I see, and I do it too sometimes, I know. We get to concentrating, we get to working, and we get this real sour, uh, stern, furrowed brows, curved down mouth look. And... It's very off-putting, and the problem with that is that when we're out in public, we're trying to win people over. You know, we really are. If you're not, you really need to reassess what you're doing. You're really trying, when you're out painting in public, to make a connection on a human level with other people. Now, I know a lot of artists will say, no, I'm not. I'm just trying to make a good painting. Well, yes and no. The, the, the problem with that is that you are in public and you are hanging around with a bunch of people and they, they see you. They, they, you know, they're making a connection with you, whether it's positive or negative. And you may be hurting yourself and costing yourself a wonderful commission by not not just smiling and just being open and friendly 
And I can't tell you how many people come up and, yeah, they ask the same questions. Are you painting? Well, yeah. Um, boy, I can't draw a straight line. You know, th those kind of things, you hear it over and over again. Well, that's okay. You're, the f you're probably the first real artist this person has ever come into contact with. And so they don't really know what to say. You're kind of a celebrity for that moment. And they're just trying to, again, make a connection with you. They're impressed with you. They, they really think you're something special. And so if you make their experience pleasant, then the payoff is, well, one, you're just being a nice person. But number two, you never know who you're talking to. You know, I won't use the crude terms that I've heard sometimes, but it's never, never mess with anybody because you never know who you're messing with. Well, that's absolutely true. You don't know when you're out in public, you don't know if you're talking to someone who's the uh, CEO of a company that they may be looking for a whole series of paintings that they want done for uh, their headquarters. You don't know if you're good talking to someone who may want a portrait of their someone in their family or their pets. I've had so many wonderful experiences where people would, you know, drive by and see me painting and stop and would turn around and come up to me and uh, ask me about stuff and uh, buy the painting right there. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. I was painting what I was intrigued, but I didn't think anybody else on the planet would care. I stopped in a parking lot and I was painting a street scene that had a Burger King and a, a Goodyear tire replace uh, repair uh, place, uh, just a bunch of very uh, uh, boring, for most people, uh, businesses. And had all the signage everywhere, wires and power lines going in every direction, really busy, um, nothing iconic or anything like that. It was just your typical uh, sort of strip mall type scene that you see when you're, you know, just driving through town. And a guy in a, I think it was a Ferrari, I'm not kidding, he drove past and I actually saw him. He turned the corner, turned around, came back, and it was a it was a red, I swear I think it was a Ferrari. If not, it was something like that because it really grabbed me. It was a fantastic car. And he got out and he came up and again the same thing. Are you painting? I said, Yes, sir, I'm painting. Um, wow, that's really good. Um I'm curious, what what intrigued you about this scene? And I told him, well, you know, I didn't think anybody else would care. But to me, I grew up in the country. And so I still am sort of amazed at times with just all of the the infrastructure, all of the, the power lines and the, and the uh, power poles and the telephone poles, all that stuff that's going on when I'm uh, in the city. And he said, you know what? I'm the same way. I grew up in the country. I'm a lawyer, and I have a practice just right up the street. But um, uh, I drive by this scene every, every day, and, and I'm sometimes amazed just with all the stuff that's going on because I grew up in the country where we didn't have power lines and uh, you know just all this stuff going on. And he said, is that for sale? And I said, well, yeah, if uh, it is. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll buy this one, but you, I, I want you to paint something else for me too. I want you to drive up the street, and uh, there's a building that that's where my office is. And he described it, and I knew the building. And he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. If uh, you get through with this one, if you drive up and you paint my building, when you're through, you come on up. And knock on the door and I'll buy both of them and I mean the worst thing that could happen is you finish that painting you go do another painting that you were gonna 
you know, you needed another subject to paint anyway, so why not go paint that? So even if he had had, had reneged and, you know, disappeared on me, uh, what? who cares? I would have done two fun paintings. So I finished that one. I went down the street. I painted the next one. And when I got through, I went to his office and knocked on the door. And sure enough, he was in there and he, uh, he bought both paintings. So that's... That's not a an unusual story. It's really not. If you go out and you do a lot of plein air painting, you're going to start meeting people. And the nicer you are, the more open and friendly you are, the, the more you're going to attract people and the more they're going to want to interact and work with you. And, uh, and plus, I just enjoy being with people. I spend a lot of time by myself in the studio and it's real fun to go to the Mississippi State Fair or my goodness just all sorts of places uh, and just set up my easel and start painting. Now there are plenty of times nobody speaks to me. They just walk by and they're busy doing their thing. Or they'll stop and nod for a second or just look and give me a nod and move on. But there are other times that I do meet with people and have a great time. And sometimes people buy stuff. Sometimes they don't. But uh, I get to meet just lots and lots of people. And I really, really enjoy that. Um, when I was young, I was not a people person. Like I said, I grew up in the country and my vision was I wanted to be out by myself and just paint in the woods and never have any contact with anybody. I'm not that way anymore. I really like getting out and meeting people and uh, interacting. And I just feel like if you're going to plein air paint, now if you're going to do it in the woods, then I mean, that's fine. Just make sure you like squirrels and bunny rabbits. If you don't, then that's going to be a problem too, but because they live there. But if um, if you're going to plein air paint in the city, then you should like people. You should want to be around them because that's what cities are. They're a a congregation of lots and lots of people, and especially urban sketching, where you're getting in and you're really getting in the thick of things. Then you know, you got to be open and you got to be friendly and uh, willing to talk to anybody. And I've, I've met plenty of people that some of them are odd, really odd, strange people. But that's okay. That's all right. And I mean, none of them were dangerous. At least I don't think they were. Um, and even if they were, uh, I was in a, you know, usually in a safe place. I try not to go places where I would feel unsafe. There are people that do that. If you're comfortable with that, that's fine. But I will tell you, uh, I don't like going into places that I consider to be a bit shady. Um, again, some people thrive on that, and they can go anywhere. Uh, I'm not so much, but uh, uh, main thing is, you know, you just want to uh, be safe. But uh, I'm just all about having a good time. Art is really hard. Being an artist is not an easy job. It's very rewarding, but it's uh, it's not something that's just easy because you're, I like to call it, you know, it's like you're performing without a net. You're a trapeze artist and you're up three, four stories off the ground and you're spinning and jumping from uh, one trapeze uh, whatever those things are called, one, you know, one rung or whatever to the next, <clears throat> and there's no net below you. There's nothing to save you. And that's the way it is when you're an artist. You know, you're out there, even if you're in the studio, you're doing your work, and very often you don't have anybody to help you to tell you how to fix whatever is going wrong with your painting. So it can be very nerve-wracking and very uh, discouraging at times. And that's where finding any, any opportunity to make this a fun, rewarding process, it's, it's really worth it 
And so when I do things like plein air painting, which, oh my goodness, talk about stressful. I mean, you're out there, <clears throat> you're not, you can't hide, you're right there with a bunch of people, and if your painting starts going wrong, ugh, well, it, it's real frustrating and can be very embarrassing. Well, that's where having a just a fun, positive attitude uh, makes it where, you know, if you do make a mistake, you know, you just laugh it off. You just go on and and uh, uh, not make a big deal out of it. Some of this, some of this attitude now comes from having. Uh, I work in the movie and television industry, off and on, and it's really funny when I'm on set and uh, we're shooting a commercial or a scene in a movie. Uh, the more fun the actors are having, uh, the more at ease they are, the less problems that we have. You know, and I, I, I do a lot of different things. Uh, I sometimes I'm a director, not very often, but every once in a while I'll, be, I'll direct. And when you're working with an actor and uh, they start flubbing their lines, the more frustrated they get, the, uh, the worse it gets. And so making sure that they're, you know, having a good time and not taking themselves or the situation too seriously and thinking, well, you know, okay, I'm, I flubbed my line, but I can fix it. You know, this is what I do, so I, I can fix it. Having, having that attitude uh, just makes things flow a lot easier and it makes everyone on set a lot, a lot more at ease too. Well, I know I've rambled a lot, haven't really talked about what I'm doing as far as the painting itself is concerned, uh, but I've got plenty of other uh, videos where I talk in depth about the particular styles and techniques uh, I'm using, I, but I will just in passing say, you know, this is watercolor uh, on arches paper, it, uh, and I also use casein which is sort of an opaque watercolor. And uh, I like to work with watercolor and casein because oils are just, I love oils. I love oil painting, but oil painting can be obnoxious. It's uh, got a strong smell and it scares people. So, you know, if you go into places, well, like this, like the Mississippi State Capitol, or you go anywhere that's a really nice historical building or whatever, and you've got oil paint, uh, usually they don't want you in there because they don't, they're afraid you're going to mess their stuff up. And, you know, if you've got watercolors, people are a little less uh, nervous about it. Uh, it also it weighs less. It uh, just, there's a lot of positives to watercolor as opposed to oils. And um, you'll notice that I use a little bit of synthetic brushes and I use lots of Chinese calligraphy brushes I'll, uh, for my broad strokes and everything. That's what I'll use. Although, honestly, I try to, uh, I'll paint with just about anything. And I did include at the very beginning uh, a terrible photograph just of the scene that I was looking at just to show that um, I, I took it with my iPhone and just to show that you know that's what I was looking at and it was a real challenging scene because I, I had all these lights that were facing me and so they would sort of dazzle my eyes um, the dome of the Capitol you know, you've got all that natural light coming in well if it gets cloudy or as the Sun is changing its position then the lighting in the scene and the lighting on your painting that all changes too so it can be quite a challenge. All right, well, I think I'll just uh, uh, wrap it up. If there's much more uh, video, I'll put on some music.
If you've enjoyed this episode of The Arthropologist, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more episodes like this, think about subscribing. I'm Bill Wilson, and I'm The Arthropologist.